Yo, what up, YouTube? It's your boy Deuce Beats coming at you live from the It Don't Matter podcast. And I got my boy Marlon, aka Marley Marlon, the building man. What up, Marlon? Deuce, what's up, baby? We own this It Doesn't Matter podcast. Opinionated. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's got to be free from the heart. You know what I mean? And you know what? Let's get this thing started. Right, right. Because, you know, it's, it's a lot going on. So how I want to kick it off, right? And this is a serious conversation. Richard Sherman caught with another DUI. Like, Ooh, is that good. a bad look for Sherman? Is this a bad look for me? <laughs> <laughs> this man is crazy right here, y'all. <laughs> hey, man. I'm going to go ahead and take this one, man. First episode. All right, go crazy, ahead and take that bro. one. Take that the, one. Look. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's smooth tequila. Trust okay, me. Hey, before we get in, hey, before we get into this, tell them tell them what kind of tequila that is. Man, it is a reposado. Uh, you know what? Uh, if if I if I had to guess, this is in Coral, Michael Jordan. If I'm wrong, then it has to be Suavecito, which is <laughs> another fire one. Hey, I got a ton of tequila, but. Y'all over here listening to Club Shay Shay talking about drink that yak. That shit nasty. That shit is <laughs> sick. Y'all got to get off of that dark liquor, y'all. Hey, and some of y'all, I know y'all still drink E&J, brandy. Y'all niggas need to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you crazy. <laughs> so you, you don't like the cone yet? Nah, no, don't man. get it twisted because I got cone yak in yes. there. Man, the liquor cabinet gotta have a cognac. Yeah. I did grow up black, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, the cognac is for sure. There, I got the pure white, the Hennessy privilege, and all of that. The XOs, I got all of that stuff, but yeah. that's that's a downer drink, you know. That's a drink that's gonna put you to sleep, right? And I ain't in that mood right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so all right, so now let's get into the topic. You know, he didn't, he didn't broke down the alcohol for you, so. How bad of a look is this for Sherm? I don't think it's a bad look at all. You don't think so? I mean, I mean, didn't this dude beat his baby mama not too long ago? That's a lighter <laughs> offense right now, right? Yeah, That's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. You know, he, he scared the shit out of me when he came in his, you know, his baby <laughs> mama house and caused havoc. I was like, damn, he might be on drugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I will keep it serious with you guys. All right. Look, man, it's it's we we older, especially anybody I know that's not no kid. Yeah. And you I mean, at the end of the day, drinking and driving is unacceptable. Yeah. Ubers, lifts, all of that stuff, man. It's never going to be a good look. It's never going to help you out. And then on top of that, I'm going to spit some real game to you. You know, a DUI is going to be on your driving record for eight years. So if you're looking to get like a truck driving license or any type of professional license, that shit is going to hurt you. So yeah. it's never a good look to have some type of, you know, DUI or DWI or any type of influence. It's not worth it because it's going to hurt you in the long run. Right. So come on, be smart about that. Be smart. Yeah. Sherman, <laughs> you from Compton, bro. Stop being a nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, in, you, in, you in Washington carrying Compton tr uh, uh, traits over there, bro. Yeah. You need to stop that. And I'll I ask your boy... It, you need some, you need some hey if you need help, bruh. I did A meetings. Yeah. A meetings. <laughs> Way back in the day. I was only like 18 years old, bruh. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it that I got caught up with a case with alcohol awareness. Mm -hmm. And shit scared, bro. I was like, damn, man, you know, yeah. it ain't worth it, bro. It ain't worth it. And I think, you know, um, from that previous incident that happened, you know. I believe he was on, I don't know if it's probation or something like that, but I know that was violated because he wasn't supposed to get in trouble. Like how you said, uh, it stays on your record for eight years. I think he had probation for a couple years or something. I don't think it was probation to that extent, but it was something that he had to where he couldn't get in trouble or have nothing within two years. And he didn't make it to Damn. two years. Couldn't do his time, bro. Now he's about to pay a lot of money mm. for something so dumb. Just a quick thought, man. And you know what that makes me think of is the kid that played receiver for the Raiders. Right. He was the same. It, it's just it never ends up in a good situation. Like, you know, it, it's it's a time that we all have to grow up. Yeah. And sure, come on now, man. You didn't lost undisputed. You didn't lost 
money with you know what i'm saying like let's stop that let's cut that out it's not worth it right and you know what i'm saying like this isn't like his first one you know because the first one you know you kind of like yo you know this just be smarter but i think when it starts getting into the second one and the third one this is the actual problem that you have you know when it's easy just to call an uber i know you know i don't know what his situation was but you know, if you drunk, that's what the Uber services is for. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. And just like you said, bringing up AA, uh, what was it, AA? Yeah, bro. You know, um, maybe this is for Sherman to actually get some help because when you start getting into two and three DUIs, this is not just, you know what I'm saying, just you out there bullshitting. It's almost like you have a, a problem. And so maybe, right, he, right. maybe he should get some help. You know what I'm saying? But let's not assume he has a problem exactly, because exactly. I don't think people have a problem just because they have a drink or two. Mm-hmm. I just think that you make a bad decision, you get judged tremendously for it. Right. And especially being Sherman, come on now, man. You already got a bad reputation on certain subjects, certain things. So we got to like make sure our image stay clean. Yeah. The media only sees the negative. They don't see the positive. So if you do one negative and 10 positive, everything is deleted. The only negative is going to stand out. Trust right. me. And it, and it's it's definitely more with our community too. We 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 damn near only got one shot to mess up. We got one shot, and that's on you know forever. We uh <laughs> we the bad guys. Yeah, yeah man. Hey, look, man. It's the truth, bro. Our community yeah. gotta do better. Yeah. And that's just one of them topics that it it, it comes from the heart. So. Right. From me, I'm trying to ask him to do better from the heart versus me making a you know a mockery of him and talk down on him. Look, man, I'm never going to disrespect a man, and I'm not going to hate on somebody from the city, too, because that's where I'm from. Yeah. So, you know, all due respect, Sherm, I'm, I'm with you, brother. Just make sure next time we make a better decision. Right, right. And so, look, I, let's keep it moving. Um, I want to okay. ta- ke- get your take on this right here. Oh. You know what? We gonna get into your career, you know, and you and all. <laughs> no, no, no. We gonna we gonna have to start a separate podcast for that. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, let me know, right? What is your take really on playing college football? Like, how was that experience for you? Man, man, man. You know, things can change overnight, and yeah. I'm a firm believer of that because. Uh, my life changed overnight. Real talk, real talk. And so initially I used I used to think college football wasn't for me, man. I was with the craziest coach in all of America back then. But you know, I got major respect for that dude because he shaped me up into something I never thought I would be, right? Right. But for most people that don't have an idea, don't understand what a college athlete does and what they're about, and you know. I don't know what today's generation, what they're mainly going through, but at the time, you know, you go into a program competing against grown ass men. Let me clarify this. You go into a program with men trying to make a living. And on top of that, you're going to play for somebody who's making a living off of you. There's expectations, of course. And on top of that, it's competition. So I, I remember a ton of dudes came in the program thinking that they were going to do this, they were going to do that. Yeah. In one month, that shit dwindled down. <laughs> in one month. <laughs> in one month. But uh, college athletes, man, if you put in the work, you you know, and you go to the program that fits you, good things yeah. can happen. Also, you got to know that there's a ton of bad things that's going to happen, too. And uh-huh. that's part of the growing the growing pains. Yeah, right. But you know what? We're going to have story time. That's okay. what we're going to have. We're going to come up with a, a a separate segment called Story Time with Marley Marr. Okay. And we're going to just talk about just all the random stuff that happened in college from the goods, the bads. And then we'll go from there because I okay. got too many stories to tell. Yeah, now you you got you got super stories to tell. You know what I'm saying? Super, so we, super. We man. gonna get super. live with that. We gonna get live. <laughs> so all right, so we'll keep it with the NCAA then. Um, yeah. So there was a case where, uh, I guess at an NCAA basketball game, everybody stormed the uh, stormed the court after the game. Like you, that always happens. Mm-hmm. And somebody ended up getting injured. 
uh, end up going to the hospital. So they're debating now whether they should uh, ban that. So what, what's your take on that? Can I get a shot first? Yeah, you get a shot, man. <laughs> Go ahead, take a All shot, right, man. Let me get, let me get <laughs> All right. So look, let's keep it real. Uh huh. That was dumb. Yeah. Right. Banning, banning, you know, crowds, you know, coming on any type of platform, whether it's uh, football, basketball, whatever, storming the courts and stuff like that. It's never a good situation for the athlete. And remember, the sport is about the athlete. Right. So my take is simple. I'm 100 percent with it because these people don't have no regards. You know, they think at that moment they're on top of the world right. and they take the glory away from the actual players. That 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 university, I think what Wake Forest, they were uh they beat, you know, was it Duke? I'm assuming it was Duke, yeah. right? Yeah, so why why take away from the team? Why? Right. They they deserve that. Let them cheer, let them, you know, be happy. And then also, you know what I'm saying? The safety of the players gotta matter. So yes. That was dumb. I'm 100 percent with it mm -hmm. because if that was me, shit, I probably would have threw my helmet at somebody and knocked them out. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like what the hell y'all doing over here? So, it, hey, man, that's that's stupid. I, hey, don't did, even try it. With did, me. did that only <laughs> look? Did that only happen like um, how many times during a football game does that happen? Is that only against like rivalry games or? It could be any type of game, right? Yeah. It could be, I mean, mostly you see it on upsets, right? Uh -huh. I remember way back in the day when, um, damn, this is funny. You remember Blunt from yeah. Oregon, the yeah, running yeah, back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Look what happened when you storm the field. You might get dropped. You yeah. might get knocked the fuck out. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And I'm telling you, you could go on YouTube and look up LeGarrette Blunt, knockout player from Boise. And you'll see that it's never a good ideal situation, taunting, storming the field. That's 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 pointless, right? And it's always usually like, okay, the number three team gets upset by a team unranked or somebody who don't even have, you know, a top, you know what I'm saying? They don't right. have a top program. And it's good. You know, I remember Appalachian State beat Michigan and all that kind of stuff. It's cool and all, but let's be real. The player safety is in danger. And at yeah. the end of the day, the players are the ones that are important. Like, right. you cannot harm the players. Like, it is what it is. Right, right. I, I, it, it's a crazy situation, but I'm like, I know, like, the fans are just so excited, you know what I'm saying? Because I always say, like, the one thing that brings us together, whether we white, black, green, it don't matter, is sports. Sports. You know what I'm saying? Easily. Sports bring all yeah. colors together. So you we, make a perfect color. Exactly. And then, you know, everybody's, for that moment, at a, you know, three hours or whatever. They want to be a part of it. They want to be a part of it. So I know they just hype, you know, you got the win and stuff like that. But do you also, you know what I'm saying, you got to make sure that, <laughs> that Look, the I gotta, safety I gotta, gotta be first yeah i gotta tell you something they are part of the win they just not a part of it at that moment yeah later on that night when all the college parties is up and everything Ooh. trust me they are part of that win <laughs> remember story time with marley mar coming soon <laughs> hey i can't wait I can't wait because I know you got the stories for show. Sure. hey i'll tell you boy it's another segment bro uh -huh. so like i'm gonna tell you this man there was times where I made things happen, and this is, you know what? I'm going to give you my first story. Okay. okay? Story first time story, right now. First story. Story time. Coming back to 2010. Yeah. Man, that was a crazy year, right? We won the championship, uh, beat ranked opponents, and, you know, that was like my come out year. Yeah. But, uh, man, we was playing against Cal, uh, Berkeley. They were ranked, yeah. and we was ranked. And I remember I had an interview, too. I can't remember what the uh, – what the dude asked me, but I just straight out told him, I was like, look here, man, we about to beat this team because they trash, da, 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 yeah. not like immature, right? Uh -huh. So long story short, I got a 65-yard interception. No bullshit. Ooh. Crazy, bro. We was beating Cal, and they had dudes like Keenan Allen, Marvin Jones, I call Chicken McNugget Head, uh, <laughs> Shane Vereen, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all of these dudes, Cam Jordan, all of these dudes, right? So, you know, I got a pick, you know, took it to the house. We beat Cal upset, like, the number 
19 team in the nation or something. They was undefeated, right? Yeah, yeah. Everybody stormed the field and stuff, right? Remember I told you that you're going to make up for it after the game? Yeah, yeah, Bruh, yeah. I kid you not, man. That was the first time my phone lost service without losing service. I had so <laughs> many damn text messages. <laughs> so many messages, bro. I had to use the homie LJ. Hey, El Nino, if you watching this, bro, this is for you. I had to use the homie El Nino phone. And we had a hell of a time that night. And I tell you what, there was a lot of people who was a part of the team back then. <laughs> <laughs> hey man hey first story hey look it up man that's yeah. true man that's true but real talk man at the end of the day i'm all about the player safety the yeah. player safety is like the key thing to me y'all can do whatever y'all want to do outside of the arena but not on the like the arena platform right. the, the field like that's that's where the players that's where they have the you know, conduct the best behavior because if you hurt a player, that could ruin much more than just that player's uh, actual career. It can right. ruin his reputation, all kind of things, because he might do something irresponsible. So, you know, we, we got to be smart about that. We definitely, yeah, we definitely got to be smart and we got to look out, you know, because you know what? And at these games, too, kids are there, too. So we, you know, we don't want the children getting hurt and all that stuff like that, too. You know what I mean? So... Y'all, right on. Y'all just gotta, you know what I'm saying? Calm down a little bit. I know y'all happy y'all got the win, but calm down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't, you know what? I don't even think they smoke weed no more. They must be doing all upper <laughs> drugs or something because they be too hype. Yeah, they be too, too hype. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hold on. Let me ask you what what was probably the most hype game you ever played? Easily Boise. Boise. Easily Boise. Yeah, Boise was crazy, man. That was it was freezing cold, <laughs> negative degrees. And Boise, I promise you, boy, boy. it was it was cold as yeah. shit, bro. It was cold. And that was actually in Reno, you yeah. know. I've been in some cold places like, you know, Boise and um anywhere else, like Utah and all yeah. that kind of stuff. It's not crazy and stuff like that, but that game was crazy, boy. When you're talking about being in negative degrees and your body go numb and then you over here playing against the number four team in the nation for the championship. And on top of that, you know, you got, you know, everybody watching you. All of the world was watching us that game. I'm oh, talking yeah. about, you know, uh, we was on ESPN, I believe. And yes. we was trying to beat Boise State to win a championship. But. People didn't want us to win because Boise State was actually about to go to the Natty that year. Yeah, and um, they beat like Oregon and all these other top teams in the in the in the, in the world. So like that game was crazy, bro. Man, yeah, that, that's crazy. Man. Look, I always hey, say shout out to Rashad uh, because Rashad made a hell of a play that game yeah. that turned everything around. And then our defense, man, I, I remember that that game like it was yesterday. Uh -huh. My boy. JMJ, D Moke, um, shoot the back end, my boy Zig. Man, we had some we had some killers that you hey, man, we doing, yeah, that was my squad. Yeah, uh, man. I that was my favorite Nevada team right there, 2010. So was it was it cool playing with Cap? Because Cap was on that team, right? Yeah, man, you know, hey, Cap. One thing I can always say about that dude is he's always been a hard worker, man. Yeah. And people try to like discredit his football stuff. I mean, you could talk about the, you know, the politics and stuff like that. But Cap as an athlete, as a player, man, it's sad to see that the NFL really kind of blackballed him because yeah. I know this dude work ethic and I knew what he was doing. Like, you know, I used to hate that dude because I called him a snitch. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, you ain't getting past that. We need to know <laughs> no, why. I gotta tell you this, bro. Right. That was a snip. <laughs> why was Look, he a snip? What you gotta ask me, bro? What you gotta talk about on this? Why? Why was Look, man? Snitch? Everybody know, right? If, if you if you a D one athlete, yeah. these coaches tell you that you don't know, got off season, et cetera, et cetera. You got these. Uh, you know, voluntary workouts, voluntary practices, stuff like yeah. that. And the GAs be out there, right? So they not really a coach, quote unquote. And so you got those dudes and then you got the dudes that be like weight room trainers and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So they they was the normal snitches, bro. They they was the dudes who report back to the coaches like, look here, man, 
Marlon didn't show up for voluntary workout. He didn't come <laughs> here. And so Cap was one of those dudes who was a, a GA Damn. and a slash weight room dude. Like yeah. he knew I, the easiest lie was I got a class coach, right? Uh -huh. Easiest thing. But I was in a couple of classes with this dude. Marlon didn't go to voluntary workouts today, coach. I'm like, God. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I was so mad, man. Uh -huh. and, and, and on voluntary workouts, bro, I'm over here doing these things called slammers, bro. We got to do every five yards, hit the ground. Man, Ooh. coach was crazy. We knocked out a thousand of them every time. It was like, it'll start off at five, honey. Yeah. And then it goes up from there. Like, the dumber shit, the dumbest shit you do, it just adds five. So <laughs> yeah, I missed a couple of voluntary workouts, bro. You could tell I was like, I was getting in shape. Uh huh. <laughs> But he so he was yeah. snitching because y'all wasn't at the workouts and shit. Real talk, and that's why I got a hey, respect for the man, yeah. dude. You can't get on a dude who gonna you know try to get you better. I mean, my thing was when we was doing those voluntary workouts, it was a lot of dudes missing, and yeah. I was like trying to be like one of them at the time. Like you know what, I ain't gotta do all that, right? And then little do I know, like that was the difference between. Dudes going to the NFL versus dudes right. not making it to the NFL. Like, that was the mindset you got to have. Even yeah. when you're not supposed to be working, you need to work. Uh -huh. And mind you, I was working out before the voluntary seven on sevens, yeah. before the voluntary one on ones, all that kind of stuff. I hit the weight room, I do my speed, my training, all of that stuff. We was doing that mandatory, but yeah. like, it was that extra, extra work that you needed to put in, bro. Uh -huh. That was, that's, that's, that's what's missing with these young cats to me. I don't think that they do that kind of stuff. And I know a lot of the OGs would say like, well, you know, we didn't do it until later on and this and that. Mm -hmm. That's not an excuse. Yeah. You're supposed to learn, not do the same thing. So, right. I, I, yeah. I, I, what I, I think is social media, man. Social media has got everybody all discombobulated and not knowing what's real or what's fake you know what i'm saying and so Ooh, they, can you can you hold on let me let me speak on that right, right there Give me, okay social media well, hold on i'm gonna put it, i'm gonna put the camera on you hold on please do because this is something i have to say okay social media has ruined sports with i don't know how to say it but it's a ton of bullshit ass trainers on social media posting the dumbest workouts dumbest stuff i've ever seen yeah all you guys with zero credibility and a hundred thousand followers this is a message for you mm -hmm. learn go to a coach's clinic work with certain people who played the sport all of this magical training y'all be doing stuff that never applies in any sport y'all need to cut it out now for the real trainers out there i'm really endorsing you guys so if I can give a shout out to some of the dudes, like I got a dude who trained my son in basketball, played professional, played college ball. Bro, I rather spend my money with him versus these, I don't know, these weirdos. I call them weirdos. Yeah. They over here thinking they somebody because they play high school basketball, if that, yeah. if that. <laughs> and they got all the drills. Yeah. I teach, they, they be posting stuff. I teach drills that elevate your game. I teach drills that help you be the best athlete in the world. And then you go out there and you see that shit don't work and then what you do. Exactly. It's crazy, bro. And, you know, that's really what's killing the game right now is that yeah. we got too many dudes out here trying to be professionals and not enough people putting in the work. Right. You got to know how, how how it is, man. And my biggest thing is, is these parents, bro. These parents, yeah. they don't know much. And they so lazy that they don't even do research. Right. Shit. That's All you got to do is Google somebody. It's going to pop up. Mm -hmm. If you know them, if you know what they've done, you can Google somebody, do the research, and then you have all the information that's needed. Yeah. Just don't Google me, though. <laughs> <laughs> don't, Google, don't Google him. But you know what? I just think that, you know, a, a lot of a lot was going on, too, right now is that the parents are not really caring. They just kind of want to. I think we're in the age where they kind of want to get rid of the kids so they could do what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that's a big factor. Yeah, I truly do. But I think these parents be trying to live through their kids. That's man. that's true. It's too. something that I see all the time. Like, yeah. you know, these kids. Okay, for example, your dad was a high school star, maybe in football or something like that, and now you're trying to force your son to be the same high school star that you was. Yeah. 
look, man, not all of these kids are really athletes like that. Right. For one. Like, let's throw that out there. Two, just because you did something doesn't mean that your kid has to do something. For example, you know, my son is totally opposite of me. I mm-hmm. played basketball. I played football. I did track. I did baseball, right? I never did soccer or any of that shit, but <laughs> but uh, I test the water in all of these sports, right? Yeah. My son won't even touch a damn football. He don't like, you know, anything but basketball. But right. I'm not hating on him. I'm giving him what he wants. And I found the trainer to elevate him. So, you know, my job is to give him the best opportunity to, you know, succeed in whatever he wants to do. Yeah. And I'm not going to force him to do something that I want him to do. Right. Now, on the flip side, I did tell him the truth. I said, look here now, if you want to go and play college level, I can guarantee you if you train with me for football, we can for sure make that happen. Yeah, That's yeah, a definitely. guarantee. Yeah. Guarantee. I can make a real, even if you're not even a D1 athlete, I can make you look good enough to be a D1 athlete. And I know right. a lot of dudes out there that got the training that can help players that's not even D1 athletes, yeah. but they can look like they're D1 athlete just so they can get a scholarship, bro. Right, right. And like me, you know, I got I got my kids too. And uh, the one thing is I never want to, you know, because I play football. I play football uh, from 97 all the way to 2006. Um, play- Damn, I got you beat, bro. Yeah, you got, nah, you got me beat. You got me beat. <laughs> I stopped that. Hey, look, let me just tell y'all something. I'll... The reason why I didn't go play college ball because I was scared. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was scared. I'm like, <laughs> I'm small and shit. I'm like, I am not going out there. All hey. I did not. I was a finesse runner. I was a running back, and I was a finesse yeah. runner. I hated getting hit. So I'm like, I, you think I'm about to go out there with them college boys? I'm small. Nah, I'm good. So I didn't go it's play not college. Worth it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. And so the one thing I just said with me with my kids is I'm like. Look, whatever you do, I don't care what you do. You can do whatever you want, but just give me 110% of whatever you want to do. You know Damn. what I'm saying? That's the one thing you got to... It's crazy that you don't even have to teach kids that. That's something that either you have it or you don't. Right. Matter of fact, I'm going to promote myself, right? Okay. And I'm not trying to promote myself, but essentially my platform that I do for training is called Effort and Technique. I yeah. posted some training. I trained my cut family, all kind of stuff, man. Um, shout out to my, my little nephew. Hey, man, the dude is a monster. He's going to, he's going, his name is Selly, Selly Davis. Y'all going to see him. What up, Selly? Uh, playing on, see, <laughs> <laughs> y'all going to see him playing on Saturdays, trust me. Um, I'm not going to give you too much about his platform because he got a lot of decisions to make, got a lot of scholarships and stuff like that. But real talk, man, I know what the difference is. And that's what I was saying, like, all right, well, what 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 can make kids stand out the most? Mm-hmm. The kid who goes to the line, right? Yeah. And what I mean by that is he don't run to the line. He goes through the line. He don't go a yard shorter the line. He goes through the line. Not to mention he's going to finish first regardless right. because he don't want to be last. You know what always stands out to me? Not the most talented person, but the person who never quits. Right. Because they had some type of adversity that they came through, and I know I can trust them when yeah. the game is on the line. Yep. That is something that is uncoachable. You can get the best athlete on the planet. He can have the wrong mindset and fuck your whole team up. Yeah. That's the truth. So what does it take? Effort. Effort, yeah. Effort. And guess what? Effort is not even a physical thing. It's yeah. Mental. Yeah, and it's I mental. Look, and I always say this, I always say like a lot of the stuff gotta be in you. You know what I'm saying? I can't want it more than you want it for yourself. You and that's why these parents, that's why these parents need to fall back off their kids. Look, yeah. if your kid ain't practicing on their own, why are you paying for this trainer off of YouTube or off of Instagram and you don't even know anything about this trainer? Exactly. You just doing it just to it because you think it's popular, you think it's cool. Look, it ain't everybody not gonna make it. Yeah, it's a it's it's a less than one percent chance in almost every black person sport that black people excel at to make it. Let's right. be real. Right. NBA less than one percent. NFL less than one percent. The numbers trickle down. Boop. So you can't tell me that it's it's a guaranteed investment. Right. 
And it's just, you know, man, I think, yeah, we do got to teach these kids, like, you know, we got to get back to teaching them the value of hard work because, I mean, I just don't understand why they not, you know. I just think that we just in a lazy time. Um, you know, kids. It's a shortcut error. Yeah, the shortcut short, error. Shortcut error. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't even really see kids out there dribbling just the basketball, just dribbling, just boom, boom, taking the Look, basketball dude. to school. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I, that's what I'm saying. Like I used to wear jeans and shorts underneath my short. I oh, mean, yeah. my pants, right? It was always like prepared. everybody. Everybody knew what that was, you yeah. know. And then you know, the shoes was basketball shoes, anyways. Whether it was Jays or some. <laughs> Or some, you know, some feelers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nah, for real, for real. You go, hey, you go have, have your shorts on underneath, whether it's recess, lunch, whatever, PE, we gonna play basketball. We right. gonna do something, you know? And that was, the crazy thing is, is that there was so many kids, I promise you that I can think of, that was crazy. They was good as hell, but they never had the training or they never had the resources to get the exposure or get the things that they needed. Yeah. Now, it seemed like every kid got the resources, the training, and this and that, but they don't pan out to be who they thought they was. Yeah, exactly. So it's like we went backwards before. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, you got to help me out with that. Yeah, and, I, and a lot of it, too, is the parents wanted more than the uh, kids. Like, you know what I'm saying? And we live in vicariously through our kids because we didn't, like like you said earlier, we didn't make it, you know what I'm saying? And so we we living through them, hoping, hoping that they make it, you know what I'm saying? But, right. And we're starting our kids off at such a young age too, that sometimes once they get to that high school level, they get burnt out. And they like, I don't really True. wanna do that shit no more. You know what I mean? Cause you know? mm -hmm. And especially if they heart ain't in it, like if this is their heart, like a lot of times, and especially like back in the days, we was doing it because we wanted to make a way out. We wanted to make a living right. for, our, for yeah. our family. We we had a bigger purpose. Yeah. Now it's not about the purpose no more. It ain't about it's the purpose. And so, yeah. and so the, you know, parents just need to stop living vicariously through their kids, and if they just be supportive. That's the that's the the main thing. Be supportive of what your kid want to do, whether it's playing sports, whether it's you know being a doctor. There's more than just being athletes and entertainers. You preach, know what I'm saying? preach, uh, preach. That's what we look, man. That's what we show on social media. Yeah, that's what we show on all major network platforms. Is if you look at black people, it's something with entertainment. Right. It's nothing about anything else, and. You know, I kind of regret that I, I didn't take school as serious as I should have, but I'm also grateful that the resources that came from sports helped me and put me in the right circle so that way I have a career and things like that. Right. And then also, you know, you know, me and you, right? Connections, bro. Yeah. We come from two different backgrounds. How are we going to succeed if we all thinking about, you know, one direct thing and thinking that's the only way to do something? That's exactly. that's. That's that's done, bro. Yeah, that's done. And we just never, you know what I'm saying? Like the things that we don't show on social media is, you know, us being doctors or us being lawyers or us being, you know, in politics. You know, there's a few in politics, but you know, showing us in different <laughs> conversations. Hey, hold on, I mean? hold on, hold on. Hey, let me change the subject, dog. Okay, all speaking right. Speaking of politics, speaking of politics, have you seen those damn Trump shoes? Matter of fact, hold on. Boom, there you go. Hey, go, go ahead. Speak on, <laughs> speak on them right there, man. Speak on them Trump shoes. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, what, what, what is it to say? Look, all right. Let me ask you this, bro. Uh-huh. What's wrong with, with people liking the Trump shoes? Because <laughs> this is my take. This is my take, right? Yeah. How many times you didn't went to the designer store, Louis, Balenciaga, you know, all of these shoes, right? Them things be ugly as hell. <laughs> ugly as hell, bro. Yeah. Them shits be weak. And they be buying them for $1,500, $1,200. And I'm like, damn, you can walk and run and swim in them damn shoes. And them shits is still going to tear apart. Like, they <laughs> ugly. They, they don't do nothing for you, but they think they hot. I can't knock Trump in his shoe game. He doing something that haven't been done. Yeah. And look, that's just the show that people don't know shit. Like they think <laughs> they they think voting for a president come from buying shoes, bro. And as you see, his shoes are reselling for over two grand right now. 
So That's I'm crazy. at that. I didn't buy a pot. I, bro, I should have bought a pair. Man, you should That's have. how I look at it. I could have sold them things on StockX or something. Yeah. Came up $1,800. All right. I mean. <laughs> hold on. Let me ask you. But is this a tactic, right, to cater to the black, uh, the black community? All of this is a tactic, bro. Yeah. It's, it's, it's planting the seed, right? Yeah. I hate to say this because if you think about it, what black person you know does research on any type of politician, any type of president, any type of... It's not many I can no. think of. I know a few now because I work with these dudes and yeah. these dudes, you know, help me out and teach me things. So I got my own political views, but right. I growing up, I didn't know a damn person. I was told that you got to vote Democratic because that's yes. what you got to vote. Yes. That's like the black thing. Like, oh, you black, you got to be Democratic. So, right. you know, we don't know shit, but now we got a president that's coming out with sneakers? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? This dude trying to be Mike. He's trying right. to be MJ. The Trump ones. <laughs> And they selling, they selling like hotcakes too. Selling like hotcakes, bro. Crazy. Things is crazy right now, dude. And you know what? Shout out to Trump, man. Shout out to the people who rocking them because I ain't hating on you, man. Shit, you might see me with a, a pair of Trumps next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. I mean, yeah. you know, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, like it's like you said too. Like growing up. I didn't really know politics or nothing neither. Like we we was over in, in our household, you know, and I speak for our for my household, we were never taught any of that politics stuff like that. So I didn't start even really understanding politics until in my thirties, you know what I mean? That's um, crazy. Isn't that true though? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Did they even teach you that in school? Nah. I don't listen, I don't remember no mm. politics. You know, mm. in, in school the and we, only and thing. We, and we wonder why all our educate all our educational systems is fraud. Like it's yeah. everything is flawed. Like you can't think of any poverty school system that has you know high test scores or anything like that because they don't know what's going on in the world. Right. They don't know their resources. They don't know about certain things that can make an impact that help change their community. Right. And that's something that that's a different topic itself to talk about. But I guarantee you this. How many of those in poverty schools got new J's? Right. They got Louis Vuitton. It may be fake, but they got it. They got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got it for show. Sure. Yeah, they got it. You know, I see too many kids, and I'm telling you, man, I be looking at these kids, right? They be living in some janky apartments, bro. Yeah. And they, they moms or whatever, they be pulling up to school, and I'm like, damn, like. You driving this 2002 Corolla, but you got on a Gucci purse, a Gucci belt, the Gucci shoes, and a Gucci hat. Your crazy. shoes and your hat cost more than your O2 Corolla. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy, bro. But you know what, man? That'd be that'd be a whole it'd be oh, a whole man. community of that. And it's yes. like, you know, if Trump using the shoes to get to his to get to people, you can't knock him, bro, because right. I see black celebrities doing the same thing. Yeah, and that's definitely. something that we got to talk about too because, yeah. you know, Yeezy went on his platform. He was selling four, five hundred dollars shoes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And now he have his situation going on with Adidas trying to sell twenty dollar material, trying to gain back the community from the yeah. black people. But like, come on, dude, you can't sell yourself out and then try to come back. Right. I mean, I'm not hating on him because I love Yeezy. Right. Yeah. I love the that Ye was always one of my top guys, but like, that's the problem. We look for things to make ourselves better, but we don't look to better others. And that's right. something that we gotta change, bro. That cycle gotta end. No, nah, we do, we definitely, you know what I'm saying? And we we definitely gotta hold each other accountable. And you know, we gotta we gotta lift our community up and, and stop all this hating. Cause we, that, we quick to hate on each other. You know what I'm saying? Let's no. Let's we build. just seen it. With, we just talked about it. The yeah. first segment, Cam Newton, our own people. Yes, our own people. You know what I mean. So we just, yeah. you know, what I'm saying, we just got to hold each other accountable, and then we gotta, uh, you know, just lift each other up and stuff like that. You mean, you know? And then we gonna have it cracking. You know what I'm saying? Th that's what they scared of. They do not want us to get it cracking. I think they just don't want us to come together. Yeah. It, it will kill. It will kill. It will kill America. To see black people not be the people who are paying 
thousands of dollars for shit that don't mean nothing. I'm sorry I got to say it like that. Right. But like, let's be real. You know, we at the lowest of every totem pole when it comes to owning and making ourselves, you know, better in certain categories. But I, I don't like talking negative about us. So I'm, I'm, I'm ready to move on because it's yeah, talking yeah, yeah, to yeah. me. It just gets me in a, a different mood. Yeah, yeah. I need Definitely. another shot. That's what's going man, on. Go, man. go ahead and take you know, another shot, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. I ain't going downstairs yet, but yeah. I'm going to get one before it's over with. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, all right. So, let's talk about this then. You know what I'm saying? Let, let's switch gears. Um, we go, we going to do a top five segment, you know? And so, t today, I want to start with your top five foods and your top five places that you've ate. Ooh, damn. Top five food, top five places? Yes. That's tough, bro. That's really tough, And I'm, bro. you know, I'm asking y'all because, you know, y'all been everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, I see y'all. You know what I'm saying? You know who y'all <laughs> you know is. No, you know yeah. who y'all is. Yeah. I know. I'm just messing with you, bro. But, hey, you know what, man? Uh, I'm going to say this, man. I have a top five food category yeah i can't really say top five food because okay. like essentially like you gotta like group food in categories like seafood right, right. and all that kind of stuff right restaurants damn man that's really really tough because i got my favorite spots that will never go away bro and yeah. i'm gonna put y'all on game on if you live in la you need to listen to this because these are game changers game changers right, right listen up y'all and then top five food, this is anybody's, you know, opinion. It's all opinion based, right? That's yeah. why our podcast, it doesn't matter. It it's doesn't opinion matter. Based. <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? So uh, top five food, I'm going to start off with seafood, number one. Uh, shit, you know, I used to love lobster. And now my favorite is Alaskan king crab. So Ooh. seafood, seafood is number one. Number two, uh, I kind of gave up the red meat because I don't really eat it as much. But damn it, I got to go with a nice steak, bro. Nice steak. A, a steak is always going to, you know, put me over the top, right? For sure. So for steak, sure. steak, you know, that's like, you know, you know, one, two. Yeah. Three, mm, this is tough because this is really, really, I got a lot of people competing for that third spot, bro. Uh -huh. But this is going to go to back to seafood, but it's going to be like more Southern. Uh -huh. Bro, this one right here is Louisiana food, bro. Louisiana seafood, like them crawfish boils, yeah. that all of that kind of shit, bro. I'm in love with that, bro. I'm whew, that shit is fire, fire, <laughs> fire, fire, fire. Yeah. All right. And shoot. Ooh. So I gave you three. All yeah. right. Four. All right. Just growing up in a black family is traditional, bro. Thanksgiving, all the homegrown food, bro. Yeah. Hey, man, moms, they look, bro. Yeah, I, actually, I'm gonna tell you who cooks it the best, and we don't have them no more. It's them grannies, them oh, grannies, yeah. boy. Them <laughs> yeah, grannies yeah. that know how to make greens from scratch. Yeah. They know how to make real candy yams. I'm not talking about them Instagram videos. They look like they do, <laughs> but they don't taste good. I'm yeah. talking about real grannies who used to cook their shit the day before Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. And then Thanksgiving, it was heated up. Ooh, that shit was fire, bro. Man. So that's that's four for me. And then five, I think because I grew up in LA, I'm gonna have to say a burger, bro. We oh, got Tams, yeah. we got Toms. My favorite is Stevens. As a matter of fact, Stevens is on my top five places of all time. Yeah. So like, you know what? Uh, just a regular like colossal burger, bro. Yeah. I, I Bro, I have an addiction to that shit. I go back home to LA. <laughs> yeah. That is my one thing that I got to do is get a Stevens Colossal Burger. So moving on to my top five places, I'm going to say number five. I'm going to come in at Stevens. Yeah. Stevens is like the shit, bro. It's the man, shit, bro. It's crazy, it, man. Yeah, man. And you had Stevens too, bro. You had a burger. I mean, your family had it, bro. I'll put y'all yeah. on. Shit, man. Hey, it was crazy. I seen your mom eat a whole Stevens burger. I have still have not done that yet, bro. <laughs> I still have not done that yet. I can only eat it like at a half and yeah. then like wait a little bit and then eat the rest, bro. Your mom ate the whole burger right. in one in one wap. Yeah, that's crazy. Gone. Bro, my auntie 
bro, I, no bullshit, bro. I went to Stevens one time with my auntie and my uncle who was in LA. Uh -huh. Why my auntie take her son, Nathan Burger, and ate the shit, bro? She <laughs> ate her burger and ate his burger. I said, Damn. oh my God, like, dang, he was sad too. He was like, you ate my whole burger. And that was you gone. You know it must have been good. Yeah, yeah, it's fire, bro. So yeah. Stevens, top five. Uh, oh man. Damn, I got spots in LA, but I'm gonna I'm go outside of LA because there's other food I like to eat too. Yeah. So, um, you know what? I'm gonna go to Vegas. Vegas? Vegas. Vegas, bro. Uh -huh. So, Vegas is the new mecca when it comes to food. They got hella food places out there. Man, so, I ain't been to Vegas in a minute. You need to go, bro. Vegas is up yeah. right now. And it's 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 a vibe for everything now. Yeah. It's not just a party place, it's a vibe for everything. So number two, just because I like the ambiance and I like the 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 the, the vibes when I go there is yeah. a place called Herbs and Rye. Oh okay. it's yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's a fire spot. It's off the strip. Um, usually, you know, we go there during a happy hour at times and get the damn, you know, the the sixteen ounce ribeye with the yeah. lobster tails and all that. But damn it, they food is fire. They got a hell of a good drink menu, so you can eat, drink, everything. The crazy. vibe is cool. Yeah, I mean, crazy, bro. So that's number two. Number three, um. Damn, this is tough, bro. This is really tough. I'm going to go with Nick's Catfish and Barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> where, hold on, where's that at? <laughs> this is in Arkansas, bro. Arkansas. <laughs> I know, that's how they give me, right? you like, what the fuck? What the, where the hell is Nick's at? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. hey, bro, all right, it's off the 40, bro. All right, man. Nick's barbecue and catfish. I went there. I swear to God, bro, I fell in love with some real down south food. Yeah. Like it's like, like the best restaurant I've ever been to, bro. That was like the best, 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 yeah. bro. So uh yeah, that one's fire, bro. That one's fire, bro. Uh number two, number two, man. Um this is another staple, bro. This is a, something that if you're from LA, you gonna you gonna know this spot. If you uh -huh. don't know it, it's something you need to know, right? Yeah. So right across the street from Jim Dandy's Fried Chicken, the original on Vermont, we gonna go across the street over there. It's a place called Etna's. Now I've been going to Etna since 1996, uh -huh. right? I know good fish, bro, and that place right there, bro, Etna's Fried Fish, man. That shit's still fire, man. It's still fire, still bro. Still fire like, to this day? To this day. Yeah. Till this day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Till this day. Till this day. So, uh, yeah, that one's fire, bro. And then lastly, I'm going to tell you this, man. I, I, I told you Vegas got something sweet in my heart, man. Yeah. And I, I this has been my favorite place. I've been there twice. Um, it's called Carver Steakhouse in Resorts World. Oh, okay. You got to go there. Okay. Hey, you got to spend money too. Oh, yeah. It's not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is not cheap. You going to have you a, hey, if you can, if you can afford it, uh -huh. it's a good place to go on a date, good anniversary dinner, et cetera, okay, et cetera. Okay. Carver Steakhouse, highly recommend it. The best piece of steak I ever had, little Kobe beef. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, man, that's my top five. Damn, man. I got to get out to Vegas, man. I gotta it's worth it. it. It's worth it, man. I ain't been Shoot, there in a man. minute. Hey, it, it changed quite a bit, man. And uh, I, I like going there, man. I yeah. actually uh, take at least one trip a year there. That's yeah. how I see it now. You know, it's worth the trip a year. Yeah, no, nah, it definitely is, man. Hey, man, check this out, man. This was our first episode, man. And this shit was fun, man. I enjoy doing this, man. Hey man, it's only the beginning. Yeah. And you know what, man? We're gonna start off like we always do, man. It doesn't matter. Opinion yeah. base. You know, these are thoughts coming from us. And right. we wanna hear what y'all think too. Yeah. So I mean, 
once y'all hear this make sure y'all comment below you know make sure y'all comment let us know what y'all want us to talk about you know what i'm saying we definitely gonna be doing story time with more you know what i'm saying because he gonna have the best stories you know what i'm saying <laughs> if you in college you know what i'm saying you'll understand what he's saying i ain't go to college advice. so you know what I'm saying? I, I'm I'm ready to hear the story. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot to talk about, man. Yep, yep. Hey, man. Much love. Much love. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It. it doesn't All matter. Right, y Look, y'all make sure to uh, y'all make sure to like. Y'all make sure to subscribe to us. You know what I'm saying? We are gonna keep this going. We are gonna be shooting. Uh, what day? What day should we shoot though? Should we shoot for Mondays or what, what day? It's up to you, bro. Yeah. I mean. It's 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 kind of like let's get the people what they want. They yeah, want to exactly. they want to look. Most people start their week on a Monday. Yeah. So technically, you're supposed to start on a Sunday, but yeah. you're gonna start it on a Monday because you work on Monday. Yeah. So let's start, let's let's shoot every Monday. Okay. Give them what they want, and then we'll come back next week with some new topics. Hell yeah! You know what I'm saying? That was our first episode. Like I said, I'm Deuce Beats. Y'all can go follow me at Deuce Beats on all social medias. Marlon, tell them your uh, social real quick. Man, it's Marlon Dot Johnson eight. Hey, I'm simple, bro. I'm not gonna hide from you. Yeah. Hey, whatever y'all gotta say, feel free. Reach out to me. Yep, and it doesn't matter what y'all mother think. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we up out of here, y'all. Right.